In today's video, we are going to talk about cameras and more so about the cameras that I would recommend depending on where you are in your career as a videographer or a photographer. I'm more of a videographer, so I'm probably going to be leaning into the video aspect of the cameras a little bit more. And it just so happened to be that I might like uh, video a little bit more than photography. Va? Let's just start out from the basics. Which camera would I recommend if you're just starting out? Well, it all comes down to what kind of budget do you have and what is it that you want to achieve with your camera? A lot of people think that you're going to be able to achieve the same thing with an action camera that you can with a camera like this. But that is simply not true because there's so many different things in these cameras that you need to consider when you're actually buying a camera. And when it comes to starting out, like when it comes to making YouTube videos, one of the things that I think is very important is that you can change the settings of the camera. And nowadays, luckily enough, you can do that on all these cameras. Like you can learn how the exposure works on an action camera. And when you're moving up to a camera like this later in your career, it's going to be the same thing. So if you learn the exposure triangle with your action camera, say, for example, then you're going to have the basics covered. So if I just look back at my career, I started out with a camera like this, like I bought one of the most expensive cameras that I could in order to get most of the features that I knew I would like to have in the future. Was it worth it, though? I'm going to say both yes and no. It cost me a crap ton of money and I couldn't utilize even half of all the features before I've actually used the camera for like two, three, four years. But I'm actually kind of glad that I spent the money because it forced me in a way to actually learn how the camera worked because I had this pressure of, hey, Peter, you bought a camera for like $4,000. Now you need to learn how it works. But I will also say that I could probably do what I did most of the time with a camera like this. And this is the Sony ZV-1. It is a $1,000 camera, I think, here in Sweden. And it is a very capable camera. One of the things that I like about this camera is that you have a flip screen. So if you're doing a lot of vlogs and you want to make sure that you can shoot on the go, then this covers that. And it also shoots in 4K. You have super slow mode that you can shoot, which is so much fun to play around with. And when it comes to actually vlogging with this thing, I have been using this for so many of my videos. It has been with me like every single day for 75 days when I did my daily run over on my, on my vlog channel. And it is one of those cameras that I think everyone should have in their kit just as a fun camera, but also it's a great option to learn how to vlog with. One of the biggest downsides with this camera, however, though, is the battery. It is really freaking bad and you can see like looking at the size of the battery, it is so freaking small. It drains incredibly quick. So if you want to use this camera for like a full day, full on vlogging, you're probably going to be best off if you have like two, three, four batteries at the least. But all in all, because it's starting out a YouTube channel, I think that this might just be the camera that I would recommend to anyone that wants to learn how things work. Then again, you also got this, which is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. It actually has the same size of sensor as this camera, which means that you're going to get this shallow depth of field in the background of your videos whenever you're doing talking heads with this. And I've been trying this out for a couple of months now. I wouldn't say that it actually found its way into my kit, mainly because I don't like the gimbal. I'm not a huge fan of the gimbal-like footage. I'm more so about handheld a little bit more intense and then practicing the craft of actually capturing what i want to do handheld rather than relying on a gimbal but what i do like about this is that you just flip it up like that it starts up and it's super easy to get started to shoot your videos with it and the same thing goes for this camera you can play around with the different exposures you can learn how the exposure trying to work you can set the exposure compensation all that stuff that you might need in a professional camera, this got you covered there as well. Even though most cameras nowadays are actually pretty good, it is nice to have one camera that is in the form factor that this is. And then you have the extra battery pack here in the bottom as well. And it charges with USB-C, which makes it super nice. But if, I mean, like, look at the size of this thing. It just like you just put it down your pocket like that, bring it up when you want to shoot, and then grab the shot that you want to have. I, I think it's really nice to be able to have something like this in your pocket 
at all times when you're out and about shooting. And it's also a very good camera when you want to grab shots off yourself because it has built-in tracking. So you sort of like mark the subject and it tracks you whenever you walk around. So if you're out and about and you want to grab a couple of nice b-roll shots off you this is a camera that i highly recommend for just that like i like action cameras and i use them a lot whenever i want to capture those extra shots or there's a lot of water or it's raining but when it comes to making these kind of videos and vlogs that i like i'm not a huge fan of not being able to zoom and not being able to adjust the focus point that you can with all these other cameras. The good thing about having an action camera is that they are getting really freaking good at capturing video. Now. I mean, you can shoot in 4K 120, 4K 30, 4K 60, there's 10 bit, there's D log, there's all these good things in these cameras nowadays that makes them like a professional substitute for when you need to get the shot. The lack of variety with the lens is what I feel is probably the biggest drawback for actually using it on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm making my vlogs. And that is why I am personally using this setup, which is the Zoni ZV-E1. This is a full-frame camera together with a full-frame lens that is called a 1635 millimeters. And what I really like about this camera is that it shares the same exact sensor as this beast of a camera, but in this small form factor. When you are shooting with this, you know that you're going to get some of the best quality that you can get on the market when it comes to 4K video. And it is an expensive camera, absolutely. But when it comes to making videos as a professional for YouTube, I've found this camera to be one of the best cameras that I can use for everything. I've been shooting music videos with this. I've been shooting vlogs with this. I've been shooting client videos with this. There's basically nothing that this camera can't do except to stay cool because it does indeed overheat when you reach 40 45 minutes of constant recording and if you're in a hot environment it's probably going to be less time before it actually overheats but i do like the fact that you have all these good stuff that we as filmmaker want to have in a camera like this such as 10-bit recording and for those of you that don't know what 10-bit is it's the color depth of what your camera is capturing and a couple of years back there was absolutely no cameras on the market that had the capability to shoot in a 10-bit color space we all had to stay within the 8-bit color space but now you have so many different options and all these cameras except for this one is actually shooting in the 10-bit color space this one is still back in the 8-bit color space but then again, I'm going to say that if you just want to have a simple run and gun setup, you want to capture videos on the go, you can't go wrong with a point and shoot. Like this is one of those cameras that I would recommend to anyone that wants to start making these kind of videos or maybe start making vlogs. It's just so simple to pick up, start shooting and then grab your shot. So now you might be thinking, well, Peter, why do you have the FX6 lined up in this setup? Well, it's more so about showing you that this camera that I got here, which is a dedicated video recording camera, shares basically the same sensor as this camera that I got right here. But the cool thing is that when you go up to a Sony E-mount camera, which is this thing that you see right here, we call this the E-mount, and then all these lenses have the same mount, you can use the same lenses on all Sony e-mount cameras which is sick so if you were to go and buy an APS-C camera today with a smaller sensor than this then you can still use the lens that you purchased for that camera when you decide to upgrade to a camera like this but you also got to be aware that APS-C which is a smaller sensor is not going to have the same kind of lenses as a full frame camera but you can use full frame lenses on an APS-C camera not the other way around. It's just going to be weird. Well, Peter, I have absolutely no idea to start because this was just confusing. Well, I kind of get it because I lined up all these different cameras. But I'm going to say that if, if you want to vlog, if you want to make the videos that I do, I would not go for an action camera. They are nice, but they fill a purpose. They fill a hole. They don't work as my main camera. And the Osmo Pocket 3 is actually going to go in the same box as the action camera, mainly because I think that these are great. These fill a purpose. And if this is the only thing that you can afford, then this is where you should start because these options are going to be great to start making videos. And as I said, 
learn how exposure works because videography and photography is all about capturing light. So if you know how exposure works, then you're going to be good to go with any of these cameras. If you want to start to make these videos, as I said, this is your best bet, the CV-1. Just make sure you have a little bit of extra battery when you're out shooting and you're going to be good to go. If you want to go up a little bit and have the best of everything, this is it. For video, you can't get any better than this for the price that you pay. Okay, I would love to hear your thoughts. Do drop a comment down below and uh, have a good one. Uh, don't forget to subscribe as well. Peter Francois, thank you, goodbye.